end of the last century, Alexander Karelin petrified heavyweights on the mat. Instilling fear with his sheer presence, he went undefeated for a whole decade, and even managed to dabble into MMA. Dubbed by Americans as the Madman for his ruthless training, and the Experiment for possessing superhuman strength. The Siberian Titan forced a change in the rules to give others a fighting chance. Today, we will walk in the footsteps of the Russian Bear, one of the greatest athletes across all sports and eras. Alexander grew up in a large industrial city in the heart of Siberia. Despite both parents being no taller than 5 foot 5, the future wrestler weighed 12 pounds at birth. By the age of 12, he was already a head taller than his father, and the scale beneath him showed 176. In 1981, the sizable teenager stepped into a Greco-Roman wrestling gym and never deviated from the chosen path. Neither the severe leg fracture suffered in practice nor the pleas of his mother, who burned her son's uniform in a sign of protest, could convince him to abandon the sport. In 1988, the 20-year-old prodigy arrived at the Soviet Union Championship. After running through the bracket and sustaining a concussion along the way, he found himself in the battle for the gold against the two-time world champion Igor Rostorotsky, who'd given young Karelin his first loss a year prior. In the rematch, Alexander immediately grabbed the waist and got a push out, earning the top position. In the parterre, the Titan clamped his vice jacked up 260 pounds and sent the adversary airborne, securing an elegant tech fall. The highlight of the match was the reverse body lift, which would later become a signature move in the Giants' arsenal, earning it the nickname, the Corellan Lift. The wrestling world stood at the threshold of a new era. At the 1988 Olympic Games in Seoul, the heavyweights immediately tasted the Siberian power. The young Colossus also stood out for having cat-like dexterity. And destroyed anything that moved on the mat. None of his matches on the way to the finals lasted the whole distance. In the clash for the Olympic gold, he faced a four-time world champion medalist, Rangel Gerovsky. Karelin came out hot, Karelin is, but got a bit too carried away. World Cup in New York State. Well, there's a surprise. Baiting the Russian in, the Bulgarian technician grabbed the elbow and performed an arm throw, which earned him three points. Back to his senses, Alexander began hand fighting aggressively. Ready and convinced the referee to order them into parterre. The only man who can try, I think we're gonna see it here. Securing a nice bite on the waist. To weight classes, but he won a point back with a gut wrench. From the parterre, he's turned him, so that's gonna be a point. Then executed his trademark throw. Gorovsky just trying to hang on, he's got him in the air and he's done him. He's but couldn't there. achieve the required amplitude and only reduced the gap by one more. He called it his signature move. Karelin upped the pressure after the break and finally managed to even out the score. Time to turn this around. Gorovsky has been gaining the dominant position for activity with 55 seconds left on the clock. Atlas shrugged at last. He's trying to get Gorovsky spinning 280 pounds of flesh around its axis. Well, it's going to be a takedown, I think. He's got him down. Cementing a three point lead, Alexander maintained it to the victorious end. There it is. This could be. The triumph made the Soviet wrestler the youngest Olympic Greco Roman wrestling champion in heavyweight history. However, this was just an omen of total domination. Now, the king had to defend his title in other prestigious tournaments. From 1989 to 91, the already revered Karelin dominated the world stage, unable to find a worthy challenge. 
When tying up with him, even the mightiest specimen looked like ordinary people. He crushed the opposition exclusively inside the distance in two consecutive world championships. And every heavyweight experienced weightlessness courtesy of the reverse body lift. Thoroughly annihilating his adversaries, Karelin claimed European and World Championship titles three times in a row. Completing a flawless four-year cycle, in 1992, Alexander headed to the Olympic Games in Barcelona. By that moment, the Soviet Union had ceased to exist, so the wrestler entered the tournament as part of the unified team, which included athletes from former Soviet republics. Karelin was given the honor of carrying the flag yet again. Unlike the previous games, the 24-year-old Alexander was now considered the uncontested favorite. All the top guys prepared for him specifically, but none of them could last with him for even three minutes. Hang on, he's got him in the air and he's done him! Watching the Siberian wrestler's supremacy, Western journalists dubbed him the Russian Bear. Albeit the moniker, The Experiment, stuck even better. Many seriously believed that scientists had created this monster in a lab. Some went as far as to label him insane when witnessing the intensity of his training. Alexander Kareland, who was the scariest fucking wrestler of all time. He, they used to call him The Experiment, because his, his, parent, his parents were like normal size. Like kind of tiny, like 5'7". And he's a f panther. Six foot two, 300 pounds, and you know what his move is? Yikes. He throws people around. He picks them up and beats them with the earth. <laughs> and look at that picture. See that picture? Yikes. I have that picture framed in on metal, printed on metal in the gym, just to remind me of what a pussy I am. In the showdown for all the marbles, Karelin faced the former world champion from Sweden, Thomas Johansson. Still, it wasn't even close. Performing a gut wrench right away, the Russian bear pinned Thomas, letting the Swede know he was a different ball game altogether. No one offered much resistance. A very quick tournament run for me. Seven minutes in total. Having conquered absolutely everything, the two-time Olympic champion still did not ignore a single prestigious tournament. Steadily expanding the list of men who involuntarily defied gravity. Unfortunately, such a busy schedule led to more injuries, and at the 1993 World Championship, Alexander suffered two fractured ribs in the very first match. The Russian team didn't even have a doctor at the time, so he had to go out there without any painkillers. Opponents saw this as a long-awaited opportunity, but even in a compromised state, Karelin had no intention of conceding an inch of the mat. Stoically overcoming the pain, he easily disposed of the main contenders. Reaching the final with authority, the injured Siberian sealed the deal within the first period. Nevertheless, by the end of the Olympic cycle, after collecting all the gold from another three world and European championships, Alexander appeared to have pushed his body to its limit, leading to an injury a few months before the trip to Atlanta. My major pectoralis muscle was torn off. Doctors said I wouldn't be able to lift a spoon with my right arm for a year. Still, the wrestler set himself the goal of making it to his third Olympic Games at all costs. He significantly reduced the number of training sessions and completely abstained from sparring. Alexander was far from being in peak shape, but no one in the coaching staff dared to doubt him. Karelin led the Olympic team for the third time in a row at the opening ceremony. It was evident from the beginning that Alexander struggled to grapple at full strength. The injury didn't allow him to perform the reverse body lift. Leaving him without his primary weapon. And although the scoreboard didn't always show the traditional 10 to 0, 
It was Corellan's hand that was raised after the whistle, time and time again. In the Battle Royale, he shared the stage with the U.S. wrestler, Matt Gaffari. Vowing to stop the Russian bear, Gaffari entered the arena to the soundtrack from Rocky IV. The crowd roared as thousands of spectators cheered for their compatriot in unison. Forcing the local favorite to back away, Alexander secured the desired position at the 45th second mark. Gaffari negated the gut wrench attempt, eliciting an uproar from the home crowd. Never easing the pressure, the Siberian found an entry and earned one point. Despite Corellan's continuous attacks, the referee gave Gaffari a chance towards the end. The fans are in anticipation of a sensation. But there was no miracle that day. Corellan maintained his offensive tactic until the closing seconds of the match and secured a hard-earned victory with a minimal score of 1-0. The Kafari match was a very tough one, but I was the one attacking. I was the one pressing the issue as opposed to reacting. At the age of 28, Alexander Karelin became a three-time Olympic champion and transformed into a living legend of the wrestling world. Following yet another triumph, the madman did not slow down, continuing to defend the heavyweight crown with a maniac zeal. Over the next three years, he won every tournament, lapping the sport's cream of the crop. Alexander did not forget the close encounter with Gaffari, and in their 1998 World Championship finale rematch, the American got eliminated in only a couple of minutes. The Russian bear kept torturing everyone on the mat, and the best wrestlers could not score a single point on him for six years. Riding an endless wave of wins, Karelin's popularity extended far beyond the realm of his discipline. In 1999, he traveled to Japan to support his friends at an MMA event. A local fighter approached him in a bold manner and challenged him to a mixed rules match. The Russian wrestler knew little about fighting, but didn't refuse. The daredevil's name was Akira Maeda. A pro wrestling star, he began his mixed martial arts career in the early 90s. The Japanese fighter had already had 12 performances under his belt, including a submission win over a USSR Sambo champion. A choke against the catch wrestling master Kiyoshi Tamura, and finished one of Russian MMA's pioneers, Volk Han. While Akira went to the U.S. for six months to work with freestyle wrestling specialists, Alexander made no changes to his training regimen at his Greco-Roman gym. According to the rules, the contestants were allowed to strike only with an open palm, and hitting on the ground was prohibited. The Karelin Maida clash turned into the biggest event in Ring's promotion history. The 17,000-seat arena was packed full, and the fighters struggled to make their way to the ring. The local darling walked out in classic pro wrestling attire, and the guest from Russia entered wearing the familiar wrestling singlet, clearly indicating that he had no plans of deviating from his bread and butter skill set. Akira decided to surprise the grappler with kicks. He kicked me in the leg using techniques from striking sports. They call them low kicks. And I understood that it hurts. <laughs> Initially, I thought it was some kind of joke, and I didn't expect to be the one in pain. So I realized it was time to change the trajectory of the fight. Feeling the effect of these strikes, Alexander quickly grabbed a hold of him, sent the man flying with a front headlock, and then diversified the entertainment program. <laughs> The Russian bear started setting up the reverse body lift, horrifying the commentators. Oh, 
Alexander then applied something resembling an arm triangle and kept squeezing the samurai dry until the bell sounded. The wrestler calmly walked to his corner, while the pro wrestler had to be escorted. The low kicks clearly didn't sit well with Karelin. So he reintroduced Maeda to Siberian Airlines. Following 10 minutes of total domination, Alexander secured a unanimous victory. He did not land a single strike throughout the bout, but Maeda still couldn't leave the ring on his own. Karelin's payout amounted to about a million dollars. All of it was donated to the Russian Wrestling Federation. In the year 2000, Alexander became a 13-time national champion and an 11-time European champion, earning the right to represent his nation at the Olympic Games in Sydney. Karelin was over 30 by then, and the number of broken ribs had reached a dozen, so he firmly decided that this would be his last showing. The bear easily bulldozed through the bracket without conceding a single point. There was no doubt that he would become the first ever to collect four Olympic golds in wrestling. It's worth mentioning that the rule set had been changed prior to this tournament. One correction was in regards to the over-under position, in which wrestlers are put if the score is tied at the end of the period. The athlete who first let go of the grip was to be penalized with one point. The final hurdle was the U.S. representative, Rulon Gardner, whom Karelin had defeated before. The stout farmer from the backcountry had no significant international achievements other than having a massive 56-inch chest. Anticipated bout in Olympic wrestling history. Taking the initiative, Alexander tried to get behind Gardner's back. Gardner out of Afton, Wyoming, grew up on a dairy farm, was one of the best conditioned heavyweights in this competition. And was awarded top position in parterre for activity. And this will be the, from the top. The reverse body lift came into play. It was patented reverse lift series. Karelin managed to elevate a nearly 300 pound body. He'll try the lift, and if Gardner. But Gardner found a way to wiggle out. He'll ram him with his own hip and try to push Gardner over. By the second period, there were two zeros on the board. And according to the new rules, wrestlers were put in an over under clinch. Karelin is in the red single. Following an intense struggle. Had a record like this was the USA's Bruce Baumgartner who competed in freestyle wrestling. Both men unclasped their hands. After a minute, if Karelin has not scored, he will be cautioned and penalized a point. The referee proceeded to watch the replay, ensured that Karelin was the first to release the fingers, and gave a point to Gardner. He's gonna bank Finding himself in an unfamiliar role of playing catch-up, Alexander rushed to make up for the deficit leaning heavily on Gardner's neck until the end of the period. We've seen going for a little hand slapping, they bring them back to the center. According to the regulations, if the score gap was less than three points, a three-minute overtime was appointed. Kafari did it to Karelin. Now, Gardner was given a chance on the mat. Maybe this is the factor, the young, the wrestler. Where he decided to simply kill time. What he doesn't want to do is take a risky attempt at a gut wrench well aware of how much a mistake could cost him, Rulon wasn't going to take risks. Looking confident. Hearing the clock ticking away, Karelin did not stop. So right now, the mood. People, do they want to see somebody like Karelin win? Do they want to see someone like Karelin lose, Jeff? He can give a caution for retreating under attack, but Gardner holds his ground, keeps his back to the center. By convincing the referee of Gardner's passivity, patented one point takedown move. the Russian bear once again gained an advantageous position. He's got to try to make something work in this position because... However, the once inevitable throw did not work this time. To start this lift. Gardner's got to be careful not to... Before the final whistle sounded, the Siberian giant lowered his head in shame. It became a battle of wills. The wrestling world just got split into before and after Karelin lost. I made a blunder and was out of emotions to turn the match around. I let down the hopes and expectations placed on me. My dad came to support me and a large group of my fellow countrymen. And I lost. I still haven't learned how to comment on this.
Karelin made his first mistake in 13 years on the international stage. And with this, his era came to an end. Following those Olympic Games, the over-under clinch rule was cancelled, but the 33-year-old Alexander hung up his wrestling shoes, exhausted by the grind and injuries. After calling it quits, he went into politics and scientific research. In 2002, the former wrestler defended his doctoral dissertation, earning a professional degree in the field of sports pedagogy. Today, Alexander is far from the madman he once was. He writes poetry, organizes regular tournaments for young wrestlers, and teaches seminars all over the country. <laughs> Staying undefeated for 13 years, Karelin amassed a unique collection of titles unimaginable for mere mortals. Was inducted into the Guinness World Records, and named the greatest wrestler of the 20th century by the International Wrestling Federation. Two decades passed since those events, but many of the Siberian Colossus's achievements remain untouched. Looking at my story, every young man should realize that despite living in the most remote corners of the world, he can become a champion. If you enjoyed the video, slam the like button, subscribe to the channel, and vote for sport.